The first whispers did not arrive with fanfare. They slipped through conference remarks, supplier hiring notices, and guarded sentences from program leads. Boeing's proposed F-47 next-generation air dominance concept kept appearing at the edge of public view, a silhouette with just enough detail to raise eyebrows. Why are seasoned observers saying the timetable could compress? What exactly aligns to make a first flight arrive earlier than many expect? There is a specific factor that flips the calendar math in a surprising way, and we will reveal it later in this video, after we trace the clues that point to a faster-than-predicted debut for this sixth-generation vision. Before we begin, make sure to hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. An NG-80-class aircraft is not a single airframe, but a family of systems integrated from the first line of code. Boeing's F-47 concept is framed around survivability, sensor fusion, and team tactics with autonomous collaborators. When people hear that, they often imagine distant horizons and decades-long development cycles. Yet certain production philosophies, digital engineering tool chains, and test strategies have shortened those horizons in meaningful ways. The result is a quiet consensus forming among analysts that the first public flight could arrive earlier than conventional timelines suggest. Major combat aircraft used to evolve slowly. Requirements would mature for years. Wind tunnel models would follow. Then a prototype might fly, and only later would software architecture catch up. The F-47 framework inverts that order. The digital backbone comes first, with hardware designed to be modular around it. That shift allows risk to be retired in parallel rather than in sequence. It is not an overnight miracle. It is careful, incremental integration, continuously validated in simulation and then proven in flying testbeds that do not need to look like the final jet to move the program forward. This systemic approach keeps timelines flexible because design iterations no longer require a full teardown to implement. In the past, a late change to a sensor or inlet might cascade across the airframe. Now, digital twins predict the knock-on effects before metal is cut, and model-based systems engineering maps dependencies so fixes propagate once. That is the difference between waiting a year and waiting a month. If a schedule can absorb change with less turbulence, milestones pull left on the calendar, and the possibility of an earlier flight test window becomes realistic rather than aspirational. A second acceleration driver is the emerging culture of missionized software. The future F-47 battle space picture will be assembled by algorithms that merge radar returns, infrared tracks, electronic support data, and off-board feeds. In previous generations, inserting new behaviors required a deep, time-consuming rewrite. In a plug-in style environment, verified modules drop into a certified container. The flight sciences remain rigorous, but capability growth no longer depends solely on hardware swaps. This decoupling means a test article can fly sooner with a core feature set, while advanced functions spiral in through planned software releases. The collaborative combat aircraft concept is also central. Rather than design one exquisite platform to do everything, the modern approach spreads roles across a quarterback aircraft and a constellation of autonomous wing partners. The F-47 is envisioned to manage this formation, directing sensors and weapons where they matter most. Because autonomous teammates can be prototyped and fielded on independent cycles, the lead aircraft does not need to wait for every adjunct system to mature before flying. This concurrency, managed thoughtfully, creates schedule elasticity and lets the centerpiece jet move forward without bottlenecks. Stealth remains foundational, yet it too benefits from contemporary processes. Advanced shaping and materials are still intricate crafts, but predictive tools now model signature performance early, reducing late surprises. Low observable maintenance concepts are architected into panel lines, access points, and edge treatments at the start. That lowers life cycle cost and, crucially for schedule, streamlines the manufacturing learning curve. When each ship set demands fewer one-off workarounds, the first flight article is less likely to be trapped by unforeseen fit issues, allowing the program to progress from rollout to taxi to flight with fewer resets. Propulsion is another lever. Adaptive cycle engine architectures promise operating modes that prioritize range in one moment and thrust in the next. For a next-generation fighter, that flexibility is not just performance theater, it is how designers meet demanding mission profiles without overgrowing the airframe. While engine maturity always paces risk, modern component test regimes and digital instrumentation compress feedback loops. Lessons from earlier cores inform the next runs, and instrumented rigs measure stress, temperature, and flow interactions in exquisite detail. Faster understanding begets faster fixes, pulling certification steps earlier in the timeline. Open systems architecture helps in a subtler way. It makes partnerships efficient when radar, electronic warfare, infrared search, 
and communication suites follow open interface standards. Integration becomes less bespoke and more repeatable. Industry partners can deliver their best subsystems without reinventing the handshake for every project. The F47 environment, as envisioned, benefits from this compatibility. It preserves security while enabling vendors to plug into scaffolding that already understands how to talk, share timing, and arbitrate bandwidth. Integration still takes discipline, but the runway to works together shortens. Production readiness is not only about factories, it is about the digital threads that connect them. Tooling layouts derived from the same source models as the Design Reduce rework. Augmented instructions assist technicians through complex composite layups and system installs. Automated inspection compares as-built to as-designed in real time. The result is fewer late discoveries that stall schedule. If an NGA D-Class program like the F47 combines those methods with disciplined supplier management, the path from first jig to first flight narrows, and the calendar feels less like a cliff and more like a ramp. Range and persistence shape the mission philosophy. A next-generation air dominance aircraft must operate confidently across oceanic distances and from dispersed bases. That drives a focus on fuel fraction, inlet efficiency, and low-drag carriage for long-reach weapons. It also drives the communications plan. Resilient, low probability of intercept data links that knit together aircraft, ships, satellites, and ground nodes. While those systems are complex, they are also increasingly software-defined, letting developers iterate waveform strategies without ripping out hardware. This is another reason why a credible early flight can occur with a lean baseline that still offers meaningful capability. Human-machine teaming will define cockpit design. Pilots today manage floods of data. Pilots tomorrow will curate it. The F-47 concept imagines adaptive displays that highlight the next decision rather than the next screen. Voice input, tactile cues, and gaze-driven selection could reduce heads down time. Behind the glass, onboard assistants prioritize tasks, flag anomalies, and propose tactics. Early versions of these aids can be flown in surrogate aircraft and simulators, harvesting real decisions from real air crews. Every sortie adds training data, honing behavior before the first purpose-built jet rotates off the runway. Survivability extends beyond shaping. Electromagnetic maneuver warfare assumes that emissions themselves are terrain. The F-47 playbook would manage when to be silent, when to deceive, and when to overwhelm. Distributed apertures collect, classify, and geolocate threats. The aircraft can select narrow beams to whisper across the battle space or burst at the right moment to blind a sensor. These behaviors can be prototyped in pods and test ranges long before a new airframe emerges. Validated tactics migrate to the final jet, shaving time from the phase where ideas meet reality. Weapons integration, often a pacing item, benefits from model-based testing. A digital surrogate of the bay, ejectors, and airflows can predict clearances and shock interactions at speed and altitude. Ground tests with instrumented rounds then confirm predictions before captive carry trials begin. Because the models and the air data system reference the same parameters, telemetry finds discrepancies quickly. When iteration time drops, envelope expansion accelerates. That is vital if an early F-47 article is to demonstrate meaningful combat credibility soon after first flight rather than waiting through long retrofit cycles. Logistics and maintainability are rarely the highlight, yet they are decisive. If access panels are designed around daily inspection tasks, if line-replaceable units slide out without gymnastics, and if the health monitoring system predicts part fatigue before it strands a jet, then aircraft spend more time airborne. For a test program, that reliability translates to more flights per week, faster data accumulation, and quicker resolution of issues. Multiply that effect over months and the schedule moves. A jet that can be turned quickly is a jet that can reach its maturity gates sooner. Security must be part of the architecture, not a wrapper added later. That includes cyber-hardening the avionics network, vetting supply chain components, and designing rapid patch pathways that do not ground fleets. When security is embedded, it stops being a two-month surprise at the end of a test phase. The F-47 concept is expected to treat software assurance as a first-order requirement, with verification tools that run continuously in development. That means vulnerabilities are discovered earlier and fixed earlier, supporting a smoother climb toward operational milestones and removing another source of schedule drag. Training is also evolving. Instead of waiting for full-up jets to populate squadrons, synthetic environments mirror the aircraft's brain and behaviors. 
Air crews can rehearse complex missions against high-fidelity threats, practice teaming with autonomous collaborators, and stress the decision aids in edge cases. When the first jet flies, the team already thinks in its language. That shortens the period between initial flights and meaningful demonstrations. In parallel, maintainers train on virtual bays with digital overlays that match real hardware down to connector indexing, speeding up the shift from learning to doing. Here is the hint we held back earlier. What flips the calendar math most decisively is this. A large share of the hardest integration has been migrating to flying testbeds, surrogates, and digital twins for years, often under innocuous names and unremarkable airframes. By the time a purpose-built F-47 article is on the ramp, its software core, autonomy behaviors, sensor fusion logic, and comms protocols may have already logged thousands of hours in the air just not in the final shape. That reuse of flight-proven brains inside a new body is why first flight can arrive earlier than many expect and why early flights can be more mature. This revelation does not rely on secret archives. It reflects an industry pattern. Complex capabilities graduate from lab rigs to surrogate platforms, where safety pilots can explore limits while the code learns. Those hours are not ceremonial. They resolve timing conflicts, validate fault management, and expose corner cases that only real sky can reveal. When a clean sheet fighter arrives, it inherits a mind that already knows how to see, decide, and coordinate. The resulting first flight is less about simply staying airborne and more about beginning a measured expansion with a deep bench of validated behaviors. Strategic context explains the urgency. Air dominance is not a static advantage. It is contested by long-range sensors, distributed air defenses, and adversary fighters shaped by similar physics. A timely fielding of a next-generation centerpiece aircraft paired with autonomous teammates complicates any adversary's planning cycle. The earlier such a system begins to fly, the earlier tactics mature, validating operating concepts that rely on dispersion, deception, and decisive timing. Waiting hands initiative to others. Moving briskly while staying disciplined creates uncertainty for opponents and confidence for commanders. Cost vigilance is part of the argument for acceleration. Longer programs tend to accumulate change, overhead, and inflation. By de-risking early through digital and surrogate flights, then making milestones stick, a team can avoid compounding costs. That does not make a next-generation fighter inexpensive, yet it can make it more predictable. Predictability is its own currency. Suppliers invest, training pipelines fill on time, and infrastructure upgrades land where they are needed. All of those effects feed back into schedule health, reinforcing the case that an earlier first flight is both plausible and prudent. Design philosophy for the F-47 leans into modular payload bays and adaptable mission systems. Today's threat set is diverse and evolving. A platform that can host new effectors, whether long-reach missiles, electronic attack payloads, or sensing packages, without airframe surgery will age better. That adaptability also helps schedule because teams can certify the carriage envelope once and then clear new payloads through defined pathways. A flexible bus and standardized physical interfaces turn future upgrades into calendar bumps rather than calendar resets, preserving momentum from first flight to initial operational relevance. Autonomous collaboration demands trust and trust is earned in test cards. The envisioned loyal wing teammates must interpret intent, respect safety bubbles, and maneuver with human-grade courtesy at high closure rates. These behaviors are trained and verified long before combat scenarios using chase planes, range rehearsals, and safety supervisors who can pause the dance with a word. As those rules of the sky mature, they become shareable playbooks. The lead platform, the F-47, then arrives to a formation that already knows how to fly together. That pre-season practice is another quiet engine of schedule acceleration. Communications resiliency is another pillar. Beyond line-of-sight relays, airborne mesh, and directional links must work in contested electromagnetic conditions. Waveforms hop and adapt, antennas steer, and networks root around damage. These are software-defined behaviors that mature with exposure, proving them on instrumented test beds including business jets and repurposed fighters, lets engineers collect wideband truth data. Each flight refines the algorithms that keep packets moving when noise is loud and jamming is clever. By the time a new stealth jet appears, its radios speak a language learned through hours of practical conversation. Airframe maturation still matters. Each increment carries limited risk and is instrumented to teach. When a flaw appears, the culprit set is smaller and fixes land sooner. This software-inspired cadence dovetails with the hardware rhythm of flight sciences, 
gradually expanding the envelope while keeping pilots and telemetry loops comfortable. First flight in this model is not the start of learning. It is a continuation of a learning stream already flowing. Maintenance intelligence underwrites sortie rate. Embedded sensors monitor vibration, temperature, and voltage across systems. Predictive models translate those signals into forecasts of component life. If a pump hints at fatigue, the alert arrives before the issue creates a scrub. For a flight test campaign, that foresight is gold. The airplane spends less time waiting for parts and more time generating data. High sortie density compresses calendar days into learning days. That is how a program can move from first takeoff to meaningful demonstrations in fewer weeks, reinforcing the narrative of earlier public progress. Sustainment planning is woven in early. Warehouses, tooling sets, and training curricula are not afterthoughts. They are planned so the first jet lands at a base that knows how to care for it. Procedures are drafted from digital mock-ups and refined with hands-on trials. When the airplane appears, the team is not meeting it for the first time. This readiness avoids the classic stall where exciting flying pauses while the Enterprise catches up. The F-47 storyline, as framed by modern practice, assumes that ground truth is ready alongside air truth, keeping momentum intact. Operational concepts inform design choices, long-range targeting, Maritime strike coordination and defensive counter air over vast theaters all demand patience, stealth, and teamwork. The quarterback aircraft must orchestrate, not merely participate. That is why cockpit flow emphasizes decision making over button pushing, and why autonomy is framed as a partner rather than a passenger. These choices are validated in war games and large force exercises using surrogate platforms. The findings loop back into design before the first dedicated airframe flies trimming churn, and therefore trimming time. Fewer post-first flight surprises mean earlier confidence. Risk conversations remain sober. A next-generation fighter is an ambitious ambition, and physics has a vote. Yet the combination of digital rigor, surrogate flight hours, open architectures, adaptive propulsion, and collaborative autonomy is not theoretical anymore. It is a toolkit that reduces the unknowns that used to pile up at the end. When unknowns are burned down earlier, schedules breathe easier. That is the essence of why industry watchers judge that Boeing's FE-47 NGAD concept could meet sky sooner than people think. The path has been repaved, so the trip is not as long. Export considerations also shape design. A platform structured for domestic requirements can still benefit from modularity that simplifies potential allied variants, even if those variants differ. Designing the wiring, cooling, and software partitions to accommodate options reduces friction later. While export policy is a separate discussion, engineering for flexibility can prevent the need for invasive redesigns if partnerships expand. That engineering foresight translates to fewer disruptive changes during maturation, which, in turn, supports an uncluttered path from prototype to operational assessment. Industrial base health is the final amplifier. Skilled technicians, composite specialists, and flight test crews are not conjured overnight. Investments in training pipelines, Apprenticeships and workforce stability pay scheduled dividends. When turnover is low and expertise compounds, errors drop and velocity rises. Facilities optimized for stealth fabrication and precise systems installation shrink the gap between theory and practice. If a program like the F-47 harvests that industrial maturity, it will move faster not by rushing, but by executing cleanly. Clean execution is the most reliable accelerant of all. What will an earlier first flight actually look like? Expect a disciplined profile, taxi tests, low speed handling, gear down passes, and a conservative climb. The headlines will focus on the moment the wheels leave the runway, but the real story will be the telemetry pouring into analysis rooms. Engineers will examine temperatures, pressures, structural loads, and mission system heartbeat. If prior digital and surrogate work did its job, those graphs will look pleasantly boring. Boring graphs are how you get to exciting milestones without detours, and they are another clue that the timeline could compress. Remember to hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Your support